calls potentially unlawful threats under the rug. The Proton has done zero, zilch, nada on this. It would appear that there have probably have been at least a few rules, a few laws broken in this whole affair. It's been three years since we amended these Senate standards of conduct. If they mean anything, then this confirmation needs to be slowed down and reflected upon. All of these standards are important, but one in particular stands out. That's number 12, which reads, each senator, each officer or employee of the Senate is expected to report to the proper authority any apparent and substantial violations of these standards or related statutes, regulations, or rules. I have done my duty as a senator. Now it's up to you to do yours. Hopefully this Senate can offer Californians more than just bread and circuses. I ask for a no vote. All right. Thank you, Senator Vidak. Senator Nielsen. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, I, I rise with a heavy heart. Opposing the confirmation of a former colleague is very, very difficult for me because how I revere anyone who serves in this honorable body. But this incident that's just been cited, I certainly was not firsthand at all. But I know the parties and I know their credibility and I have no question that it happened. That is absolutely unconscionable. And this is a troubled agency, kind of in the backwater, but ever since it was passed into law, I believe, in 1974 or 75, it's had a kind of a troubled and rough road. And there were always charges of the bias of the board, particularly emanating from the agricultural industry. And it can't be said that the board actually helped farm workers get contracts because there aren't very many after all of these years. The most important issue though, a board member and that board member based just on that one incident now has put a cloud on future decisions and future unfair labor practice charge resolutions and legal matters other legal matters before the board because there certainly can be a charge of bias. It may be that he'll have to recuse himself from a lot of votes and I don't understand it. That's not senatorial. We are about being able to disagree with each other in an agreeable manner, in a respectful manner. That's what being a senator is about. And you would expect that when you leave this house and go back out into the, what I call real world, you would act and comport yourself in the same manner. And in this case, it would be, it's in a judicial kind of a capacity, akin to a, an appellate court process. Uh, pretty boring, very deliberative, but also with that long historic cloud of doubt about the fairness of the board. Anything that lends to that reputation, as this incident clearly does, is damaging. I believe that he could serve somewhere else in government in a good capacity, but not in this one. Thank you, Senator Nielsen. Senator Anderson? Senators, I rise to ask that we be fair to Senator Hall. Senator Hall served with us. He deserves the very best from us. We should, under these serious allegations, pull back his nomination and clear his name. We should not put him, his nomination forward and have him serve under a black cloud. Now, I read the letter uh, from uh, the, the great senator from Hanford, and these are serious allegations. This body already has a black cloud over it, having seen, in my short time in the legislature, three senators go to jail. 
because of lack of ethics. I believe that if we truly operated with ethics as our core concern, we would want to pull it back, clear his name, and then move forward. A nice, neat package, volatile ALRB member Hall threatens farmers. The witnesses fear retaliation from Hall and the ALRB. Senate leadership makes some sort of arrangement and sweeps Hall's potentially unlawful threats under the rug. The pro tem has done zero, zilch, nada on this. It would appear that there probably have been at least a few rules, a few laws broken in this whole affair. It's been three years since we amended these Senate standards of conduct. If they mean anything, then this And I have no question that it has a of bias. Allowed three senators to go to jail because we failed to scrutinize their actions. And then we changed all our behavior. We put blackout periods and we did all the smoke and mirrors. Today is a pivotal point for this floor. Is it more smoke and mirrors, or does it, ethics really have teeth on this floor? Do we really care about ethics? Failing to clear his name, failing to give him the opportunity to clear his name in a public forum is a failure of ethics on this floor. Now, I don't want to vote no, but if we're going to fail at ethics, I cannot vote yes. And I never shirk my responsibility to vote. So I'm going to be voting no under protest because we failed to give him a chance to clear his name. I think Senator Hall deserves better from this floor. I think the people of California deserve better from their senators. And yet again, we're going down the same path that led to three senators straight to jail. I urge a no vote unless we pull this back and give the Senator Hall his opportunity to clear his name. Thank you, Senator Anderson. Senator Berryhill. Thank you, Mr. President and members. Um, I, too, uh, have to uh, stand up today in opposition of Senator Hall to the uh, ALRB. During his time in office, Senator Hall marched in support of the UFW and against Growen Farms and the 2,000, 2,000 farm workers it employs in my district. Now, all these farm workers want is for their votes to be counted. And uh, I would be more than happy to consider Senator Hall for another position more in line with his experience and where he can use his considerable knowledge and skills to tackle important issues. But his public opposition to my constituents represents the same bias against farmers and farm workers that has been promoted by this board over the past several years. Now, I received not only calls from growing farms, but a number of different growers on this confirmation. Uh, the boards were, were silent, but a number of growers were not. And so uh, for these reasons, I must represent my district and oppose this confirmation uh, today. I urge a no vote. Thank you, Senator Berryhill. Senator Atkins. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I rise today in support of Senator Hall's confirmation. This was a name put forward by our governor, and the Senate Rules Committee held a very lengthy hearing on March 1st, where we had ample opportunity to question Senator Hall on his views on both the ALRB and the Agricultural Labor Relations Act, as well as his thoughts on his ability to be fair and impartial in matters coming before the board. We listened to lengthy testimony, both in support and in opposition to this appointment from those most impacted by the decisions of the board, to the farmers and the farm workers. We heard farm workers in support of him, as well as farm workers who had concerns and who were opposed. I felt that most of the concerns with Senator Hall resulted from a lack of familiarity that people had with Senator Hall. It was for that reason that Senator DeLeon announced his intention to hold the appointment on the Senate floor to give Senator Hall an opportunity to reach out and meet with the farming community and to try to allay their concerns. And I understand that he has followed through on that commitment. It was a commitment I asked of him that day at the Senate Rules Committee. Unlike the farming community, Senator Hall is known, a known entity to the members of this House. 
In politics, we have to listen to both sides of an issue before reaching a decision. And Senator Hall has done that in his entire time in elected office. And I believe him when he said that he can listen to both sides on matters coming before the board and make a fair and impartial decision. I would also say, in my time in the legislature, I have actively reached out and uh, toured across California in all of our communities in the ag community. It is very important that we have a balance of understanding of people who live in and have represented urban communities and that we reach out and understand the importance of the agricultural community and all of its complexity for us in this state. I have a great deal of respect for those who work in the agricultural industry and I have learned so much from all of you and from them. Senator Hall came out of the Rules Committee without a single no vote, so I would urge you to confirm his appointment today. Thank you, Senator Atkins. Senator Morlock? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I uh, enjoyed working with uh, Senator Hall. He has a lot of attributes and natural skill sets I wish I had. Um, I'm concerned that uh, we have someone that may not have the skill sets for this particular appointment. It pays some $143,000 a year, a lot more than what we earn as senators. I find it as an interesting way to reposition a former colleague. And, and so I'm frustrated with that. And now we're in debate over it. And so I've looked up the word cronyism. And it just says, the appointment of friends and associates to positions of authority without proper regard to their qualifications. So that's my reason, Mr. President, for opposing this appointment. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Morlock. Senator Weso. Thank you, Mr. President and members. As the chairman of the California Legislative Latino Caucus, I rise in support of Isidore Hall's confirmation Senator Isidore Hall has served the state of California with honor and distinction. He is a person that has combed through thousands and thousands of issues represented in, in many more thousands of bills that have been considered here. He is a member that I have spent time uh, visiting different parts of the state on numerous issues. I know him to be a highly qualified individual for this post and a highly knowledgeable individual of the subject matter that will be presented before the Agricultural Labor Relations Board. I, I've seen some of the, 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 the attacks that have been waged upon Senator Hall through the media, and, and I have to say with, with, with lots of disappointment in my community that I have never seen comments and statements and a campaign waged against a, a person of this body that is more racially motivated than that. And it's, and it's sad and it's disappointing. But, you know, I think we, we have a responsibility here to do what's right. And we know uh, Senator Isidore Hall as a person that has fought for his community, that has received the support of his community, uh, through his, his career, and I know this is going to be a, a wonderful appointment for the people of California. I know he's going to do a wonderful job for, for all of our communities, and that's what we need. We need somebody that understands the, the most pressing issues facing our state at every level to serve uh, in, in, a, in a board of, the, of this uh, quality and caliber to make sure the right decisions are made by everybody. And, and, and uh, the, the worst thing we can do in, in the definition of cronyism is, is appoint, uh, you know, a, a, an insider from this industry to oversee uh, the industry. That's, that's the definition of cronyism. We need uh, to appoint independent, objective people. We need to create a board that's diverse. We need new ideas on, a, on, a, on, on an industry that, that, that does, does, does need some oversight, that uh, has uh, been shown to have abuses. This is, this is something we need to do. We need, to, uh, we need more diversity in, in boards and commissions 
and in uh, corporate boards and in the workplace uh, in certain areas where we don't have it. And this is a, a move in the right direction. That's why I think this body, having worked with Senator Hall, knowing him as a person of integrity, we all need to cut the politics here and vote unanimously to appoint him to this board. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Wayso. Senator Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. President. And I must say that um, I'm glad that I, the voters of my district, thought it appropriate to elect me to represent them so I can stand on the floor today, stand here as the nimbostratus of the State Senate. Look it up. And uh, speak to this nominee and this issue. Like many of you, I received a letter from our colleague. And in the final paragraph, our colleague asked that the Senate's confirmation process remain a model of integrity <clears throat> on this issue. And as a member of this body and a former member of the Rules Committee, I took that declaration very, very seriously. And so I did some homework. I thought that that's what my colleague would expect from each and every one of us. <clears throat> Having been a member of the Rules Committee, I'm familiar with the very um, thorough process that the Rules Committee staff and Rules Committee members go through in evaluating members who've come before them for confirmation. And so I went to the agenda <clears throat> because I wanted to make sure that I had a solid working knowledge of what the ALRB is and does. I was pleasantly surprised to see that it's one of our most ethnically and gender-based diverse committees uh, or boards currently in the state of California. But again, I wanted to make sure I fundamentally understood the role. As some of you may or may not know, the ALRB has several main responsibilities related to the complaints of unfair labor practices. The General Counsel is required to investigate allegations of unfair labor practices and issue complaints when, based on the investigation, the General Counsel believes the unfair labor practice took place. The board then provides a hearing to hear evidence relative to the complaint and to order a remedy if the complaint is found to have merit. Qualifications of board members. As you all know, the act was established in 1975. And that act empowered the governor to appoint the five board members who act in a quasi-judicial role assigning administrative law judges to hear disputes concerning the validity of union certification elections and charges of unfair labor practices and making final decisions on appeals from the administrative law judges' decisions. The board, given the critical nature of those actions, has been operating with two vacancies since 2006. The Senate Rules Committee put the appointee through a very rigorous um, hearing. They asked questions relating to administrative issues, staffing, resources, and operations. They asked questions about the timeliness of dispute resolution and how the nominees plan to expedite them. They asked questions, and the nominees talked about the need for additional resources and staffing stability. Apparently, that's been an issue for the organization. They talked about their desire to open additional regional offices and to increase access to ALRB services. They talked about whether or not the Labor Relations Act is still relevant to farm workers today since it was passed all those decades ago. And again, they talked about the numerous litigation matters that are before the board. In reading the agenda and reading the letter submitted by our colleague and hearing about the additional actions he intends to take, 
to make sure that those who are um, governed under the auspices of the ALRB, I have every confidence that Mr. Hall will step up and live up to the expectations identified in the act. <clears throat> but the letter that our colleagues sent to us went beyond that. It went beyond the core expectations and functions of the ALRB. And today we heard statements about, quote, senatorial behavior. Well, I'm curious about what constitutes senatorial behavior. Is sharing a colleague's personal data over the radio waves senatorial? I wonder. The issue at hand was an after hours, out of the state capitol exchange that none of us witnessed directly in a bar between adults. Well, colleagues, I would argue that there are many members of this very body who spend countless hours as adults in restaurants and bars in this very city. And I don't know that any of us consider when we decide whether or not we're going to vote on your bills, co-sponsor your bills, the actions and statements you make as adults out of the building on your own time, whether it's witnessed by colleagues or not. Another colleague raised the issue of ethics. <clears throat> and I would argue that it certainly is Mr. Hall's constitutional right to free speech, to participate in a march, and protest on behalf of a community of workers. Are we expected as appointees to governing boards to give up our own right to free speech? I would question that comment as well. So colleagues, again, Having reviewed the agenda, the documentations, the comments, the commitments this nominee made during the hearing process, the hearing that we've heard during which he garnered no no votes, I stand here to express my intention to vote aye in support of the governor's nominee to the ALRB. He has expressed or exhibited no behavior that would suggest his inability to live up to the functions required of the board. I'll be giving him my I vote. Thank you, Senator Mitchell. Senator Bell? Well, as a person that's uh, been in these chambers and in the assembly chambers for eight years with Senator Hall, I evaluate him on his full uh, set of accomplishments and abilities that I work with over those eight years. And when I look at, when I look at the record of his accomplishments and uh, my relationship with him as a colleague, um, in these chambers, I see somebody who's even-handed. I see somebody who doesn't uh, have a strong ideological bias. He has some biases, but they're on certain issues, and I would say he's very passionate on the social justice uh, issues. I see a man that's... Uh, very religious, it has a religious inclination. I see a person that has produced legislation that benefits the state of California. So what I do when I look at a nominee, especially from our house and um, our colleagues, I look at their accomplishments. And what I see is somebody who has served who has prepared himself, who, who comes to meetings prepared, who studies the issues, 
who votes with me sometimes and votes against me sometimes. But I always respect the fact that he at least took the time to look at the issue that I presented to him and made a due consideration. So I see somebody that can serve in this position in an effective, fair manner. I do not see um, one incident that somebody might bring up as a reason to turn down somebody who we've worked with for, as I have, for eight years. Day in, day out, talking to him, discussing with him on issues. One incident is not how I would evaluate this person. I would evaluate him on my full time of association with him. And I urge you to do the same. Because if you don't do that, that indicates some predetermined attitude and another reason beyond what we're talking about in these chambers for voting against him. I urge and I vote. Thank you, Senator Bell. Senator Glazer. Thank you, uh, Mr. President and members. Uh, let, let me speak as, uh, as Isidore would want me to speak, plain speaking. Uh, Isidore is a tenacious fighter for the members, the residents of his district when he was serving here in the Senate. That's, that's what he did. That was who he was at his core. That job required being plain spoken uh, and sometimes being tough, trying to get to the root of the issue and trying to bring truth and justice to the work that we do here. And, and he did it, and he did it very effectively. Uh, for each of us, we take different positions in our, in our professional life, uh, in our personal life, and, and we understand that the, uh, where we sit and where we stand at that moment in time creates a different circumstance of evaluation and of consideration, of grace uh, and humility. And uh, he's moving into a different place now. He's not there to be an advocate for his constituents in his district, which he did so well. And I think that it then goes to issues of, uh, of evaluation that are slightly different. And I, I believe that in his heart, he uh, is, looks for honesty and for fairness and for righteousness. Uh, in the work that we do here for the people of California, and I think he can serve in this job with those values and that perspective, uh, and I believe he'll do it in a, in a thoughtful and healthy way, and I support his nomination. Great. Thank you, Senator Glaser. Uh, members, any further discussion or debate? Senator Bates, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is a very difficult issue for all of us who worked with uh, Senator Hall in a variety of um, instances. I think the question is, do we need to act on this uh, particular nomination today? And my uh, staff report indicates that it could continue until January. That might give some time uh, that was referenced by my good colleague from San Diego to really give uh, Senator Hall an opportunity to clear his name by his performance uh, on the board if he can be on that board uh, without a confirmation. Uh, that's the issue here. We know that Senator Hall was a man of uh, deep passion, concern for his district. Uh, however, the allegation is that that passion moved to intimidation. Whether he meant that to be uh, is certainly something that's in his heart and something we can't know, but it's a concern that we all have to be very concerned about because the role that he will play on that board is one of balance and cannot have that passion represent one side more strongly than the other side. So I would caution us in moving so quickly on this nomination. Uh, perhaps in his interest, is it best for him not being given the opportunity to show how he can perform in a very different situation than as an advocate for a particular group that sent him here to do their work. So I would urge uh, us either not taking this up today, I would have to vote no for those very concerns. I need to see uh, that going forward, he can perform in the manner that he's going to be required on, a, on a, a board that seeks to balance uh, competing interests. So please consider that before you take your vote today. And if it's possible that it's not required to confirm today, but he can go forward and, and show us uh, that he can perform the way we intend and with uh, certainly the kind of uh, behavior that, it, that does merit what the good senator from Los Angeles mentioned, uh, senatorial. Uh, so with that, 
I urge no vote or continuance. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Bates. Any further debate or discussion? Senator Skinner. Thank you, colleagues. I was not intending to speak today because to me this was a very straightforward matter. But given the nature of the debate that we've heard so far, I thought it was only appropriate to stand up. We've heard various allegations of the necessity of an investigation. We've heard that this somehow that we are being unethical. Well, if I, uh, we have a particular colleague who has asked for an investigation based on hearsay. And so far it is legitimately only hearsay. What we understand from the press reports and the press reports where this is not just uh, rumor, but where the individuals in the hotel at the time who uh, purportedly spoke with the nominee, they are quoted as indicating this is not something of concern to them. And yet we hear these, uh, this discussion on the floor of some terrible ethical breach. Permission to read. Uh, granted. Thank you. That our colleagues should, quote, have gotten a hold of us, of us, his constituents in investigation. And basically this individual said that our colleagues should, quote, have gotten a hold of us, of us, his constituents first. He has no clue what he is talking about, unquote. So I find it very interesting that we would have a call for an investigation when on one of the individuals under question so is basically on, quoted in the media as this is not substantive. I stand in support of the nominee's nomination. Thank you, Senator Skinner. Uh, any further debate or discussion? Seeing none, uh, Pro Tem De Leon, would you like to close? Hearing that took place uh, just recently with regards to the nomination of uh, Senator Isidore Hall. Um, you can pull down the tapes as well as the, uh, the transcripts of the hearing. It was very thorough, um, complete, very transparent uh, hearing. Those who were in support of the nominee um, had an opportunity to speak openly and freely. Those who were in opposition uh, to the nominee, uh, the critiques with regards to uh, his perceived perspectives on a variety of issues, uh, they were given every opportunity to uh, uh, speak as well too. Uh, therefore, no time was ever curtailed uh, from the opposition. It was a very thorough, very comprehensive uh, hearing. Uh, very spirited, no question about it. Uh, pretty evenly divided for those who were for the nominee, those who were in opposition to the nominee. Uh, but it was very thorough and it's for the public to download uh, the process. I believe that the bipartisan Senate Rules Committee uh, comprised of both Democrats as well as Republicans uh, acquitted themselves very nicely and, and very fairly with regards to this hearing. Um, two, with regards to the call of the uh, uh, investigation from the senator uh, from Tulare uh, County, uh, Kings County. Um, it's, 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 not, it's not our practice to review or investigate barroom conversations. That's when it gets down to it. It's just not our practice to review or investigate conversations that take place at a bar. It's just not what we do here. We have a lot of other work to do. That being said, I do respect the senator from Tulare and Kings County. He's representing his constituents. Um, it's very important to him. Uh, I understand uh, 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 the concerns that he has with regards to uh, is there a conflict of interest or not with regards to uh, uh, support that has been voiced vocally uh, for a certain organization. So I respect and I recognize uh, the senator's um, uh, 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 premise of why he is concerned. So I want to put that on the record. So I understand that and I also respect that. But I also want to underscore again, uh, it is not a practice to really investigate, review, again, conversations that take place elsewhere. Um, so I want to note that right there. Um, Lastly,
on this nominee as the leader of this Senate body, and I don't mean exclusively to the Democratic caucus or to the Democrats, but to the Republicans as well. I respect and recognize that the Republican caucus has a Republican leader. But as a leader of this Senate body, this institution that comprises of both Democrats and Republicans, I'm very, very troubled uh, by some of the comments made by the senator from East San Diego County. The words such as black cloud to conflate the past of three former senators with Senator Isidore Hall. To conflate that is, is very troubling to me. This institutional body uh, collectively, a few years back, went through a very difficult period, one after another. And we suffered as a whole. And we have some senators here who are freshmen who weren't here at that time and didn't have that opportunity to be in the eye in the storm and, and, and feel it and understand it and know what it felt like. A lot of us were here. And there were some folks here who tried to add more fuel to the fire to sort of help burn this institution down, who are part of this institution. But overall, this was a very, very difficult period for all of us. So to conflate that is, is outrageous. I just wanted to point that out. Above the fray, no political partisanship here for this institution. I want to highlight that folks may or may not know that our poll numbers as an institution are higher than ever before when they started recording actual favorability ratings for this legislative body. We're at 57% right now. Highest number since the Ronald Reagan era. And that is because of the work this body has done. There's a diversity of opinion. I understand that. I respect that. But when we raise the minimum wage, when we move forward environmental protections, climate action, civil rights, equal pay for women doing equal work. These are the policies that have been demonstrated and the people of California, the majority of Californians, feel good about this institution and the work that we're doing. Now, it's not a, mo a moment to sort of kind of self-congratulate ourselves and pat ourselves on the back. We still have much work to do still to move this state forward. But I want to be very careful in how we sort of describe this institution. Because it's an institution where we have give and take, we have dialogue, we have spirited debates. And there are consequences from elections. There are winners and there are losers. There are majority and there are supermajority. That is a consequence directly from democracy, from the people of California. And right now, we're at 57%. So I want to be very careful how we start conflating, you know, um, a troubled past with the current nominee before us today. For those who may have issues with today's appointee, which I respect, I recognize, and I understand, I would suggest that they bring it up directly with the governor. There was a word that was used, and I won't ask the question, cronyism, quote, end quote, cronyism. Cronyism, I took it as that we made the nomination, we made the appointment, or we made the recommendation for the appointment. Let it stand on the record today to all the people of California, to the press, to the staff members, to the bloggers and everybody, we never made a recommendation, directly or indirectly. We didn't make the appointment. We didn't make the nomination. So the word cronyism is highly misplaced 
at this moment. It's not being used properly. But again, it gives that perception to the larger public. Something unseemly is happening. Nothing unseemly is happening in this institutional body. We have more transparency than any other legislative body in the country, and in fact, in the Congress, in the U.S. Senate. So it's very important for me as the leader of this Senate body to state what I just stated. I understand there's going to be strong, diverse opinions on today's nominee. I respect that. I recognize that. But let's not try to burn this house down, this house that we all belong to. With that, I respectfully ask for an I vote. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen. Aye. Anderson. No. Atkins. Aye. Aye. Bates. No. Bell. Aye. Berryhill. No. Bradford. Canella. No. De Leon. Aye. Dodd. Fuller. No. Gaines. No. No. Galgioni. Aye. Glazer. I Hernandez, I Hertzberg, I Hill, I Wesso, I Jackson, I Lada, I Leva, I McGuire, I Mendoza, Mitchell, I Monning, I Morlock, No Morell, No Newman, Wynn, No Nilsson, No Pan, I Portentino. Roth, I Skinner, I Stern, I Stone, no Vidak, no Wykowski, I Wiener, I Wilk, no. Call the absentees, please. Bradford, I Dodd, I Mendoza, I Newman, Portentino. Ice 25, uh, nose 13, appointment is confirmed. Uh, members, if we could uh, quickly move to privileges of the floor. Senator Skinner, I believe you have an introduction. Colleagues, um, we have some fourth graders visiting us from Senate District 9. I would like to recognize Elaine Holt the sister of Senator Stern's Chief of Staff, Liz Fenton, and her colleague, Martin Lewis, who are both fourth grade teachers, who are here with their students from Wildwood Elementary School in Senate District 9's Piedmont, California. They are here today in the gallery visiting the Capitol and Sutter's Fort. Right. Welcome. Thank you, Senator Skinner. Uh, now members will move back to gov governor's appointments. Uh, pro Tem De Leon, oh, excuse me. Um, Senator Canella, for what purpose do you rise? I'm going to uh, do the appointments. Oh, great. Thank you. Okay, we are on uh, file item 24. Yes. This is for uh, Amy Miller, Associate Director, Division of Adult Institutions, and Anthony Lucero, Director, Division of Juvenile Justice, uh, Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. Ms. Miller is responsible for female programs at CDCR, including three women's facilities, three fire camps, and several community programs.